Hey guys, what's up, Murder Birds here. Welcome back to the channel, and we are continuing right along uh, with the next set of episodes for the second mini series before we get to the inevitable uh, season 10 reactions from my continuation of Red vs. Blue. Um, for those of you who are wondering, I literally just went and changed into another shirt just so the thumbnails don't look super consistent between uh, uploads, just so there's no confusion. Um, but yeah, I just finished watching the MIA uh, Missing in Action miniseries. Very interesting, to say the least. I mean, it was fun. It was different, but it wasn't, despite my initial impression uh, of it being canonical, I thought it was going to be canonical and pivotal to the story, not necessarily a wild goose chase looking for one person on the red team when you're really looking for the source of the, of the, of the entire conflict, which was Donut wanting to go on a shopping spree and needing someone to go with him to, to carry his stuff or to help him go from place to place or pick a right, you know, a pair of shoes or, that go with this outfit or whatever. So it was very interesting. Uh, I liked a lot of the beats and 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 moments that that reminded me of fonder years of Red versus Blue as I was catching up. Beaver Creek, uh, that was super cool. It looked so different, so I didn't, I wasn't entirely sure if that was it. Uh, seeing Doc again uh, was really great because you know he had a, a bit of moments to shine during season nine, and he's one of my you know one of my absolute favorites. And, um, and Vic as well, you know, Vic was such a sight for sore eyes, you know, that, that threw me back all the way to Blood Gulch, but, um, that was the longest mini series ranging at six episodes, about 20 minutes. This reaction is going to be, um, the mini series reactions to, uh, where there's a will, there's a wall, which is actually the shortest mini series. So I do apologize for some of you who probably are getting to this video and be like, oh man, you know, it's a short video, but hopefully it still fills the void of, of, of continued red versus blue content. Um, we're slowly inching closer and closer to season 10. I know that's what a lot of you guys are looking forward to, uh, myself included. Um, but this mini series is covering three episodes. It does take place during season nine of RVB. Um, from what I was told, and it is canonical, so I don't know if it's going to be the same rambunctious running about of, of the previous, uh, you know, miniseries that I just watched with MIA, but nonetheless, I'm excited, so uh, without further ado, we're just going to get into that. Again, I want to say thank you guys so much for your continued support. I do appreciate it, and for those of you, again, um, this is kind of just a quick call to action that uh, for those of you who are patrons of mine at the $5 level or higher, or if you're not a patron, if you become a patron of mine, you will have access to next week's reaction which should be available uh by the time this uh this video releases so you'll have a short video and you will have a very meaty video uh for the next one that i have coming up for those of you who wish to um or who want to directly support me and get you know a little extra perk uh, of an added video every week but uh with all that said thank you guys so much for your continued support thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video um as always leave your thoughts in the comment section and without further ado let us begin. All right, guys, we're going to be getting into the second mini series of season nine with red versus blue, where there's a will, there's a wall, the shortest mini series um, of all of them. And it's only three episodes long. And if I'm not mistaken, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, and I think MIA might actually be a contributing factor to this as well. But I think those these two mini series was Miles Luna's first contri contribution, like major contribution to uh, to Rooster Teeth and to the Red versus Blue series before he took the helm after season 10. I remember watching a full sale, like, um, like a full sale presentation, um, where Miles was basically talking about the industry and he was talking about his involvement with Rooster Teeth and what it was and the kind of work that they do and kind of giving advice to, to up and coming animators and people who, who kind of want, who kind of seek an, you know, to kind of seek a career in this industry. And I believe he talked about like, Halo Waypoint way back in the day and these mini series were kind of like his first footing into directing and creating content for Red versus Blue after he got hired um at Rooster Teeth. I I I think that that's the case. I didn't research it but I'm I'm pretty sure he mentioned I know he mentioned where there's a will there's a wall. I don't know if he had major involvement in MIA but if so this is kind of cool to kind of see where he kind of made his foot his footing and like left his mark on what eventually became him directing uh, seasons 11, 12, and 13 being the Chorus trilogy. Again, for a while, I was working as a machine animation intern on season nine and then eventually doing um, a few other things. What, what kind of helped get me to where I am now was we had, um, we had this deal with Microsoft. Microsoft used to have this uh, platform called Halo Waypoint. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Not a lot of people used it. 
<laughs> but Halo Waypoint was a service that we had an exclusive contract with where we were, um, uh, we were supposed to come up with a little like three to four episode mini series. Uh, we would put out like three a year to help kind of draw audiences um, to the platform and have people check it out and see all the cool stuff they had on there about Halo. Everybody was busy. Uh, there was RTX stuff was, was getting started, I think around this time, or might have already happened. And uh, we were working on RT shorts and things like that. And uh, essentially what it came down to was um, Bernie Burns, the, the, one of the founders and writer creator of Red vs. Blue, he didn't have a ton of time to write this piece and neither did a lot of the other main uh, comedy writers. And so I just wrote an episode and then emailed it and was like, hey, I don't know if this is any good, but it sounds like y'all need something, so uh, here you go. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, I wasted your time. I'm gonna go back to the prop closet, okay, bye. And Bernie came up to me the next day and was like, so you wrote that whole thing? And I was like, yeah. yeah. He goes, do you know, do you have like the ending kind of planned out? Because it's three episodes. I was like, oh yeah, no, I know, I, it was, I've had, I had ideas. And he was like, cool, can you write the next one? I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I did that, and he was like, nice, now can you write the last one? And then I did, and he said, cool do you mind directing this? And uh, I called my mom again. <laughs> and, uh, and I got to direct this three-part miniseries called Where There's a Will, There's a Wall. Um, and it was so much fun and it was so exciting. And I once again thought like, cool, I peaked. This is it, this is the best. And after all that was said and done, uh, Bernie asked if I wanted to help him write uh, season 10 of Red vs. Blue. And after, you know, another call to my mother, I got hard to work on that. Uh, I was working uh, alongside Bernie and Matt, who are constantly acting as mentors. Um, Eddie Rivas was another one of the writers that contributed to that season. Of course, Monty Ohm was bringing craziness to the table on that project. Um, and when all that uh, was done, I took a deep breath, and we celebrated by doing like a Game of Thrones barbecue that Bernie would put on, and while we were there, he was cooking sausages, and like it was any other question in the world, Bernie just asked me, hey, do you want to be the director of Red vs. Blue from now on? And you only have one answer you can give to that. <laughs> it is, yes, sir. Um, I worked on uh, Red vs. Blue. I was the writer and director for seasons 11, 12, 13, and was the head of story for season 14. Uh, in which we kind of did this whole like anthology thing to try and find the new person to take the show and run with it. Um, and it was crazy and I learned so much stuff and I failed a lot and I made a ton of mistakes, uh, but I grew from them. And in the middle of all of that, um, I was getting closer to uh, Monty Ohm. So Monty um, is this like, he was a god tier YouTube animator. Uh, he worked on video games and stuff, but this guy was known for unbelievable cinematography and camera work and, and choreography and um, worked with uh, the guys on RVB starting in season eight all the way through season 10. And at that point, he'd kind of earned his right to do really whatever the hell he wanted. And he wanted to make a show called Ruby. Um, <laughs> Monty went to my friend Carrie first because their desks were right next to each other and they both loved anime and they started like building this crazy world with monsters and like these academies that you'd go to where you learn to fight the monsters and this everybody had badass outfits and weapons and stuff. Um, and when Monty realized that I was becoming the new Red vs. Blue guy, he was like, let's see if he wants to come and, and, and help us with this. And so um, Carrie, myself, and Monty work together to build Ruby, and we, uh, we were just three buddies that wanted to make something that we thought was cool, and then we accidentally changed the whole company forever. <laughs> uh, and that sounds really cool, but it's actually really, 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 really scary. But anyways, I'm excited. Uh, as always, again, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Um, and without further ado, we're gonna be jumping into this in three, two, one now. Hopefully the audio is good. Hey. Oh, and uh, hey, I think Griff, this is further into minute? season God nine. I'm right in the middle of something. Episode oh, yeah? one. What are you doing? Um. Standing. I hey, think. it's great to have oh, Griff I... start up you know, the episode. Really <laughs> you think Command would send us a couple of lawn chairs or something? I want to talk to you about uh, Sarge. Don't you think he's been acting a little Sarge. odd? Sarge. Uh, he's been barking orders and spying on the blues. What's so weird about that? Well, uh, first of all, he's been spying in the wrong direction for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, really? Yes. 
He didn't it's even know that the blues got a shipment this morning. I don't believe it. I know. Huh. I'm starting to think something might be seriously wrong with him. You're telling me I've been pretending to work <laughs> out here this whole time and George <laughs> wasn't even watching? What wow. <laughs> Front and center on the double. Okay, so now I guess something's up so with, with Sarge. Wow, they got a George, new vehicle! You're going to pick up so many chicks. I mean, I know I you said got that the about tank. tank but this, <laughs> this is a freaking helicopter. I mean, Sheila is a chick, kind of. Phyllis, I mean. Dude, Shut what up, the hell? Really they just got a random Shut drop? Up. You're ruining the moment. Man, just imagine what we can do with this thing. Oh boy. Yes, I am out of here. <laughs> See you later, losers. <laughs> He's just like, get me as far away from these Ladies, people as please. possible. I can't Oh my god. <laughs> Bad chicka bow wow. Nice. Oh my god. I heard Bad chicka bow wow, the song anthem, too. I have no idea what I'm oh. doing. <laughs> dips. No, I oh. Dips. oh man, who's gonna get it? <clears throat> what are they doing? Oh yeah, what's up with that wall? Oh, where there's a will, there's a wall. Okay, I. Don't mind me, I'm, I'm slow. Wow. Oh, the wall just came out what? of nowhere. Where? The worst place of all. Directly behind us. <laughs> um, that's just a wall, sir. Well, do you have any idea where? behind that wall? No. Uh, Was it always there? Was that wall always there? Me, Sarge. Are you disappointed in me for not caring about it? All this time we've been putting our backs to the wall without even considering what could be on the other side. <laughs> know, it's just an expression, Sarge. A massive army right behind us. Or it could be some sort of alien wall. Or nothing. A despicable evil just waiting to get loose. Um, Sarge, maybe you should sit down for a little while. Clear your head. <laughs> I bet if you ask Amanda to send us a few lawn chairs. You know, come to think hey, of it, that wall them lawn chairs are going to come in handy. I mean, why would anybody build a wall in the middle of an empty canyon? Why would anyone build a military base in the middle of an empty canyon? <laughs> Don't start that again. These God. These will never be answered. But we'll continue. Why are we Stand here? We will not rest until we know exactly what is behind that wall. I've already got oh, Lopez boy. out conducting research in the field. Lopez! Status O. Lopez! So this is after the episode where he was created. Tina, I knew there was something foreign and mysterious about it. I hate you so much. Great to have you back, Lopez. Wow, what? That was the first episode already? Wow, these are really... These are... I have to savor these. This is really short. Excellent work, man. Whoa! That's right. <laughs> we'll see you on the side of that wall in no time. Episode... Uh, dude, sir, you're gonna crash you know right into it. You need Great. a better... Uh, Let's keep it that way. A longer arch. Now, like a... My heart is seeing tremendous power. Yeah, you need more height on that. Also, episode two. The war hog and blast straight through to the other side. <laughs> no, that's inertia. <laughs> yeah, not well, enough inertia. This ramp. Yeah. A tremendous waste of resources. <laughs> I don't Anton. know, Sarge. Driving a car through a solid metal wall just seems a little implausible. It's yeah. Impossible. Look at that! That's a fucking weak ass We've ramp, taken dude. Extra special precautions to make sure nothing goes wrong and no one is hurt. Or to be more specific, uh, that very few things go wrong and only think, one person is hurt. I How think that's why he did it, cause cause Griff is the test dummy. All right, let's kill two Griffs with one stone. Wow, called it. All right, how about this? <clears throat> In exchange for letting me fly the new vehicle, I'll give you permanent shotgun. Dude, screw that. Uh, the passenger seats are exactly the same. Not to mention completely exposed. But, but look, it's got a badass machine Oh, gun. God. Yeah. Oh, no, he's going to kill his teammates. We are ahead and losing altitude. Caboose, yeah, please don't play with that. Now permitted. If you're interested in our frequent flyer program, we'll soon begin <laughs> heading out to Evelyn. Oh, Listen, boy. I'm not falling to my death just because you don't know how to fly that thing. Oh, what? And you do? Hell no, but I never get anything around here. Yeah. Like sniper rifle, Caboose got to drive the tank, well, and the Reds have their Jeep. he missed all of the sniper shots. Yeah, I saw that happening. Ow. Oh, my God. Is he dead? Looks like that plan failed. Don't <laughs> be so quick to judge. Grip, are you alive in there? Yes. Uh, there mission's failed. Oh, damn it. Failure. <laughs> all yep. I'm saying is, for someone who hasn't gotten laid since deployment, I sure do feel like I'm getting screwed all the time. Okay, oh boy. Fine. I guess we'll just have to Jesus Christ, Tucker. Way. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors? Let Simmons Caboose decide? Status. I mean, status reward, Simmons. Oh, Tucker. Well, sir, the Warthog is destroyed, the wall is still intact, and Donut says that Griff is lucky to be alive. All terrible news. Lucky to be. To say <laughs> it, sir, but I really don't think we have enough firepower to blast through to the other side. What I'm hearing you say is we need huh. to find something with even 
more firepower. Actually, sir, I was saying like a tank. Wait, we should what? just we should just stop. You and Griff will commandeer the enemy vehicle. No, oh shit, no, no Phyllis! An eighty mile per hour crash just to get blown up by a tank. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, remember that. Remember the old Blood Gulch days. <laughs> Do I have to come back? Ridiculous ramp contraption into an equally ridiculous elevator contraption of similar value. What? Oh Why? boy. Because in the somewhat likely event that these two don't come back, we've got to have a fallback plan. What's the fallback plan? Let's hear it. If we can't go through the wall, got to go over it. Gonna go over it. But I thought the I thought that's what the ramp was for. I didn't know the ramp was to go through it. Hey, he hates birds. Murder of birds. Griff hates me. Confirmed. Wow, my god, and this is it. The third episode. Don't make me do this. <laughs> what Damn is it, that? Hurry up. We gotta find out what's on the other side of that wall. But, but I don't think oh. I can climb any higher. And the bird keeps circling me. <laughs> the Why game. are you doing that? <laughs> what have I done to anger you? Oh, oh boy. I'm crap in the car or something. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> the game won't allow him to go higher. Poor Griff. Well, we know Simmons and Lopez are already in a heated battle with the Blues. Probably not. Ah, I think there's a nest up here. Oh, God, what if there's eggs? <laughs> all right, Lopez. Oh. There's the tank. Where are the, the Blues? Oh, they're, they're on their the new vehicle. Where, uh, Probably spying on us. While using a sniper as a telescope. Oh, wait, there they are. Oh, wait, what are they doing? Todo esto podría ser más what? De tres How are they gonna decide? Solo a el Three shot. Yeah, just pipa. kill him. You're right, Lopez. It does seem suspicious. Dispara a mí. <laughs> All right. Okay, ready? Come, yeah, calm down. Ready, ready to win that sweet ass helicopter? On three. One. Are they? Two, what? Three. Caboose. Hello. Oh. Come here, Caboose. Come on, Caboose. Come here, buddy. I'm oh my God! Don't, don't do that. Trip. What's up, buddy? Yes. That's not, no, he's not a dog. That is correct. Why do you keep saying my name? Come here, buddy. I've got a surprise for you. No, no, no. No, over here. No. Over here, Caboose, Caboose, just get in the well, fucking, get in the vehicle and leave. Also, pick church, because he's better. Wait, Caboose, I'll teach you how to read a calendar. I, I never thought of that, actually, before. That could be good. Caboose, I'll let you play with a tank whenever you want. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Oh, my just God. Him, Caboose is so influenced. Hey, wait, Tucker, come on. You can't do that. Why not? You never ruled out lying. He's going to kill him again. I got through lying. And the other half I got by stealing, which is basically just lying about... He's literally going to kill no, Church no, hey, again. Caboose, wouldn't you rather come over and hang out with me? Your, your best, best friend? friend? Yes! <laughs> your best... Oh, your be you know come what? on! Forget it. It's not worth it. Not too late. I heard ah. you all did. Yeah, watch out, ladies. Captain Tucker is ready for liftoff. Okay, He's your best mate, friend. Just say it. Wait, what's that? Lamos, uh, yeah. Oh, it's the new oh, vehicle. Oh, is he gonna take it and fly over the wall? I'll be so pissed if. All right, Lopez, change of plans. We're stealing that airship. Gomo. Are they really gonna get both of them? Think about it. What if the tank isn't strong enough to blast through the wall? What then? Vamos a tener un tanque. Excuse me. Tener un tanque y los alustrados. We have a tank in the blues. We have a tiny plane. They can literally just shoot out of the sky on top of that. So if we steal that chopper, we can just go over the wall instead of through it. It's a sure thing. No, Lopez, just leave. Say, Lopez, leave. Dumb not to do it. Oh boy. Oh yep. boy. Oh boy. Hello. This is. And thank you for activating the UH-14 <laughs> Falcon aircraft. You may call me Phil. Phil. Oh. <laughs> right, hello there, Phil. Phil. Would you like Phil me to is... the tutorial. The tutorial. Hell yeah! I love tutorial. <laughs> tutorial mode activated. Oh my God. Ever. Main Shut battle up, tank, everybody. main aircraft. Oh, that's such a great callback. Okay, okay. How Meanwhile, many? they're gonna what get jacked, and he's doing the tank. tutorial. Well, no, I'm not giving you my helicopter. Uh oh, how about this? What if I promise to be your wingman for life? Not happening, dude. Yeah, Tucker, nothing. Nothing's getting through to him. This is my final offer. The sniper. I will give you the sniper rifle. Oh. You know, Church, the old Tucker probably would have taken you up on that. Oh. But I'm Captain Tucker now. Okay. Captain Tucker only does two things: gets laid <laughs> and pilots his sweet ass helicopter. Which you haven't done yet, Hell and you I never will. You and you could have just gotten the sniper. Now that you have mastered the art of liftoff, 
We will move on to the yeah, the mastering hand, the art. Captain Tucker could also learn to love right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Feels fuck you, Captain. dude. Uh, Sarge? Uh, That's what happens. Is it a secret weapon? Oh, God, no, what's gonna happen? Those are blue base, isn't it? It kind of looks like a big bird. We uh, took care of that Murder bird's bird. confirmed. Wait a minute. Is that Graf Simmons? Simmons. Save me! <laughs> Save yourself, me dude. No abandoning the mission. You Ooh. gotta be kidding me. I don't want to die a virgin. Porque mi miras dices Why are you staring at me when you say uh, that? <laughs> Uh, is this how it ends? Yep. Oh boy. Simmons, your terrible piloting skills broke to the wall. Oh, did they? But, but where's Griff? Damn it. Whoa! Oh, are you another one? Why would we do that, uh, sir? I just wanted to know what was on the other side of our wall. It turns out it was just a harmless second wall. Case closed. Fuck you! But sir, case closed! Fuck you, Sarge! I hate you! This was so dumb and pointless! Oh, and by the way, when you're done with that wall, the warthog can use some maintenance! Yeah, of course! It's kind of a funny sound when it starts and it's Chop, chop, get to work! In several pieces! Have fun with that! I think my knees are in several pieces! Yeah, ha, ha, yeah, just kill them all! Kill them all, Lopez. You know what? Just do it. All of them. Red damn blues alike. There you go. Robots win. And then Sheila and Lopez go live happily ever after. My god. I love Sarge, but god damn it. Like, really? A second wall? That cleared your curiosity completely? Oh my god. I feel like that plot was just as bad as like Donut simply wanting to go out of his way to go shopping. And then on top of that, you have Sarge who has this short-minded ambition to just want to blow through the wall and then immediately dismisses that the second he does it, despite not knowing what's behind the second wall, which is equivalent to his friend. It's, it's fun. It's goofy. You know, it's, it's, it's something else. Again, canon somehow, some way. Uh, despite it also being in the Epsilon unit, which makes it really filler and irrelevant in the grand context of, of, of like season 10 and everything else. Cause I feel like the capture unit, unless it becomes a plot point down the road with using whatever's inside of it, you know, now that Epsilon's out, I, I don't know. This was very, very <laughs> over the top. I felt so bad for Lopez. He's like, Oh, by the way, Lopez chop, chop. These vehicles aren't going to fix themselves. Have fun by the way. And I'm, oh my gosh, Lopez needs, Lopez needs to be redeemed. Lopez needs some love in his life. Everyone in this freaking box canyon is, is going to like drive him up a wall. Oh boy. Well, that was the second mini series. That was an interesting one. Um, I think at this point. We have one more, th one more big thing planned, one more big video planned. Like I said, if you guys are patrons, you guys will have access to it by the time this is uploaded. Um, but we are rounding down to the inevitable season 10 premiere of my reactions. I hope you guys look forward to it. Um, I know that this video, again, was really short, and in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't really contextual with what I'm going to be, like, researching and 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 kind of theorizing and speculating on for the future with, this, with like, the core story of RVB. But at the same time, I kind of want to go through all of these things similar to how everybody else did. It is canonical, so I do have to cover it, even if it's not relevant to what's going on in future. But, um, you know, this is kind of like, it takes me back, you know what I mean? Like, even though it's the Epsilon unit, it, this is really what our entertainment was back during the Blood Gulch days, you know, before everything got crazy with freelancers and AI and, pro and you know, and the director and his project and... And, and everything else in between. And it was still very entertaining before we ever knew what it would become. So um, I feel like I'm just so like antsy for for like Project Freelancer stuff. Like even when I was doing my reviews and my and my discussions of of the, pro, you know, of season nine, I kind of really just glossed over a lot of the Epsilon, you know, capture unit stuff just because I felt like the, the you know, the more like the, the meat of the episodes was really what was going on in the past, which is what everyone was trying to figure out and put together since it developed the story that we all knew by the time season eight hit um 
but yeah, uh, that's kind of everything. Um, it was fun. It was interesting. I think I liked the MIA one more just because it, first off, it was a lot longer. So it was a little bit more to digest. And I think the payoff of like typical donut, of course, donut went shopping. I think that one had a better payoff than, than just a wall behind another wall. Um, and if this was Miles' first contribution, he probably did. He did a better job than I ever could with directing or putting together his own episode. But, uh, but yeah, I, I loved it. It was, it was fun. It was exciting. I love these two back to back. Uh, I'm going to be getting back to you guys with the next video, uh, next week. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Leave any thoughts you guys had on the video in the comments and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.